Good. Good to see you. Jade, how are you? Well, yes, sir. Anton, Anton, how are you? Anton. Uh, yes. Ross. Well, now, rumours have it. Yes. You've been training as a chef. I have been, yeah. So, that's so tonight on. you should be shit hot. Um, so the pressure's on big time. Pressure's on for no, me. but hold on. Okay. I might yeah, be the yeah. worst chef that you've ever had I'll in the kitchen. Up, I think. Okay. Ross, what's the menu? Gnocchi. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not G. All right. Not see, Gnocchi. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. Gnocchi. Gnocchi. He's there. No. Gnocchi. Gnocchi. Main course. And what is it? Most expensive fish in the market at the moment. Yeah. Um, it's a fish. Oh, <laughs> from the white cliffs. For fuck's sake. Meet tonight's family brigade, the Buntons. Spicing up the kitchen tonight is Emma Bunton, joined by boyfriend Jade, former member of Boy Band Damage, who now is a trainee chef in a gastro pub. Following in Emma's footsteps is her cousin Ross, a music student. The final member of the brigade is Jade's brother in law, Anton, a firefighter. With a restaurant full of hungry diners, the heat is definitely on. So, first thing, I'm going to show you how to do the gnocchi. OK, it's done yeah. with fresh peas, broad beans, margarine, shallots, and these wonderful potato gnocchi. Nice hot pan. If it goes into a cold pan, it absorbs the grease, so they become really greasy. You want these crusty on the outside, nice and soft in the centre. Shallots in, nice hot pan, touch of salt. Half a teaspoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of butter, OK? The olive oil stops the butter from burning. Broad beans and our fresh peas. They go into the uh, boiling water. See the colour now? Yeah, yeah, nice and crispy. Right, Em, any questions? Not yet. Come on, you're used to pressure. Jade, you're used to pressure. Yeah, Anton, you're problem. definitely used to pressure, yeah? Mm -hmm. And Ross, you're just a lazy student. <laughs> <laughs> right. Margarine in, yeah? White wine, just a touch. Don't go crazy. Reduce the white wine down to serum. That burns off its alcohol content. A couple of tablespoons of cream in there. Make sure that's nicely drained. Come on, and keep up with me. I oh, am. Yeah. yeah? Oh, yeah. Please. Again, now look at them now, see? Nice and mm. see how they've gone almost double in size. Finish with a little bit of butter. Okay, they I've come out. I've never seen gnocchi like that. Usually, yeah, no, I you've hate seen them gnocchi covered in a sauce. Now, we need crunch on the peas. They're fresh. So I don't want it too sticky over a juice, but just coating. Yeah. And let's be nice and generous with our gnocchi. Then finally finish it with pecorino. OK, good. Ready? Happy with that? Yes. 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 Quick taste. Cheers. Mmm. I've never tasted it like really? that before. It's lovely. Jade, you like that? Gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Right, now let's have Jade Nemo on this side. Yeah, Ross and Anton over that side, yes? Yep, good. Yeah. Right, are we ready? Are we yes, chef. chef! No, that sounded pathetic. Are we ready? Yes, yes chef. chef! Right, the Bunton Brigade. Wakey, wakey, yes, on all the four covers, table two. Four knocky, four soul, four crumble. Yes, yes chef. chef! Excellent. Let's go. Right, Emma. Yeah? You're set the fucking place on fire. Watch out. There you go, turn your gas down a little bit. Right, Jay, don't put that butter in there, because if you haven't got the colour on the gnocchi, the butter will burn. Yes, yeah. OK? Good. No, stop. Stop, stop, stop. Right, they look overcooked now. Yeah, they are completely overcooked. Keep, keep that going a bit more, Baba. Just oh, reduce that a bit more, yeah? Who the fuck's Baba? She's my Baba. Me, I'm Baba. You're Baba. Baba. Right, OK. That's much better, Jade. Yes, chef. Much Thank better. You, chef. Now you're getting the feel for it now. Emma, when was the last time you turned the gas up and down at home? <laughs> I don't. I don't cook. Did Jade do it all at home? Yes. Seriously, all the cooking? All the cooking. Honestly. No, but the thing Lucky is, lady. he doesn't let me either, though. You know, when I try, he oh, gets really? angry. Is he that possessive? He gets angry with so me nice. and he tells me to get out. Down. So what do you do? The washing up? No, I do the wine. And so I look, I put my heels on and I look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Four plates out from there. Yeah. On there like that. You want to do that sauce? Yeah. Put them yeah. yeah. Off you go. Sorry. Clean your plates, finish it with pecorino. Yeah, and on the hot plate. Yeah. Quick, quick, quick. Let's go, quickly. <laughs> right, here's Janet Street party. For the last four months, Janet Street Porter has been on a mission to persuade the public to eat British rosé veal. They're going to go to the slaughterhouse, we're going to slaughter them, and then we're going to eat them. Last week, she said goodbye to her veal calves, David and Elton. But her biggest test lies ahead. Preparations are underway for a very special party up in Yorkshire. I'm going to cook one of Janet's veal calves in the F Word restaurant next week, but today Janet's going to serve the other calf to a hundred of her neighbours in Yorkshire. It's a big challenge. For many of the locals, this will be the first time they've tried veal. It's crucial it tastes sensational, and that's the job of the chef, Tim Clements. There he is. There he is. 
Right, you know, that looks pretty heavy. Will it rotate on the spare? I, ho I hope so. What if it's too heavy? I hope so. Well, then we go move to plan B. What's plan B? Yeah, I'm not quite sure yet. Janet wants as many people as possible to try her veal, so she decided to spit roast the entire animal. A real challenge since veal is very lean and spit roasts are normally reserved for much fattier meats like pork. It's going to be a delicate operation. So how are you going to stop it drying out? We're going to keep marinating it. And we're off. Better be good, otherwise Gordon will be gloating. The meat is cooking, and Janet's keen to convert the entire village to British rosé veal, so she wants everyone to join the party. Will you come? Oh, I can. Oh, Right, oh, you, can do, you can do the blessing at the meal. Will you do the flowers? Sorry to interrupt your rehearsals. Have you ever eaten veal? No. Come on, I don't know. Have no, I, I eaten know. veal? I need a bit of entertainment. We don't want anything too avant-garde to put people off their meals. <laughs> Janet's managed to persuade most of the village into coming to her veal meal, but that's only half the job. She also needs to make sure they love the meat they eat. After months of Janet's care, it's crucial that David's cooked to perfection, so the meat is constantly basted with rosemary and olive oil as it slowly cooks, wrapped in full, to keep the juices in. Someone have a taste. Would you like to have a taste? No, I want to taste you along with everybody else. If it's cooked now, no, is it going to be overcooked? I don't think it will be. That's what do you don't think? Let's hope she's made the right choice to spit roast David, or her months of careful preparation would have gone to waste and her guests may be going home hungry. Four more away, please, yes? Yes, yes, yes. Jade. Yes, hey, yes. Keep up the energy, yeah? Come on. Yes, yes. Let's go. Pan on. Good. Right, Ross. <laughs> when they're brown, they're cooked, they're black, they're what? Fuck. Yeah, are you colour blind? Um, no, yeah. chef. Anton? Yes, chef. Yeah, you know one thing's a charcoal and cremated. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever work with your parlor yes, there, yes? yes. Right, you Jay, some more. Yeah, Where's Emma? Yeah, get disappear. out. Sorry, Come on, Emma, let's go. Look what he's doing. No, See? He's helping, Emma. Taking not, over. Not taking over. Hey. Anton, you're on fire. Put it down. You've got to burn off the alcohol, but not set fire to yourself. There you go. Do you call 999? So how long have you two been together? Ten years. Ten years. Ten years. And you're not married yet? No. No, he hasn't asked. Oh, you're waiting for the right move. What are you waiting for? <laughs> are you saving up for a ring? Um, have you changed your mind? No, I just think we're happy as we are. Good, Thank Jeff? you. Thank you very much. Service, please. Table eight, yes? Come on, guys, last two tables, yes? Yes, yes. 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 <laughs> Anton, hey, well done, you are. Uh, very, very good. Yes, I thought chef. he was going to be the fucking surprise, but hey, well done. Well really well done. Last two, just are last your, two. Are we your favourites? We'll find out when the results come through. <laughs> Go, well done. Yeah! The sauce was fantastic. The the gnocchi was really really tender. It was it was very potatoey, not as as pastry as what I'm normally used to. I would definitely pay for it. It was light, refreshing, great textures, really enjoyable. It was really fresh. Um, it was great colours. Gnocchi was was fantastic. It was absolutely right. Right, results of the starter, yes? Yes. Um, how well do you think you did? I hope they're spice fans. Right, you hope they're <laughs> spice fans. I thought personally you all did a very good job. Right. I'm nervous. Really nervous. OK, so here's the thing. The All Saints yeah, got 39 out of 50 for their starter. Right. Any better than that, that puts you in pole position. Jose. Go on. Thank you. So, the number of customers that are happy to pay for their starters. 46 out of 50! Yeah! Coming up, I'm on shift with the London Underground's emergency response unit. What's the emergency? Cardiac arrest. And the people of North Yorkshire finally get to sink their teeth into Janet's veal. Bless Dave and Elton, Lord we pray, their lives were short but bright and gay. <laughs> Welcome back to the F Word. Now it's time for the main course. Dover sole with a brown shrimp butter. Very robust, slightly sweet. Cooked simply on the bone is the best way. Flour. Season. Coat the fish lightly. Dust off any excess flour. Pan. Olive oil. Season. 
olive oil, butter, turn. Into the oven, 180 degrees, eight to 10 minutes. Shrimp butter. Everything has to be ready before you start because the butter changes from brown to black in seconds. Hot pan. Butter. Cayenne pepper. Shrimps. Capers. And then lightly season it. Now the butter's just starting to catch. Lemon. Parsley. Sole out. Beautiful. Nicely coloured. Shrimp butter over. Dover sole with shrimp butter. Done. Are we ready? Yes, Chef. Okay, you know how a hot plate works, Jay, don't you? Yes, chef. Yeah, good. Yes, chef. That's because you are going to run the hot plate and I'm going to cook with Emma. You can I'm do this. Hot plate. I don't fucking First. care. Oh. I'm doing nothing, okay, unless you give me orders. Okay. I'm your commie. You're in charge of the effort aggression. Are you ready? Get on your station, Chef. Excellent. Right, two tables of four. Ramsey and Bunton. Yes, Chef. Four. Yes, Chef. Two tables yes. of four, so you just need two pans. Just two pans. Oh, my God, this is hard. Take the others as well. Yep, turn it over. Turn it over. How long on your sauce, Ramsey? Pronto. Coming right now. It's all right. Yeah, it's just easy on the mash, yeah? Start that one again. Let's mash. Look at the mash on this table, yeah? Bunton's mash is coming out beautiful. Woo! Gonna get a gold star in a minute. How you doing? Remember, watch those fish, yeah. Once you flip them, put them in the oven. First part. <laughs> Next stop, healthy food. Stand clear of the doors, please. If there's a problem on London's busy underground, it's the job of the emergency response unit to deal with it. They tackle anything from derailments to suicides and are among the unsung heroes in the aftermath of the 7-7 bombings. But this unit from Acton in West London are eating their way to an early heart attack with greasy breakfast served up by team member Joe Walsh. In the mornings we come in, it's important that we eat early because if we get a shout, we've got to go out. They'll have double eggs and double bacon, double sausage, beans, tomatoes, mushrooms and a couple of slices of fried bread. I'm here to sort out the eating habits of London's underground emergency response unit. Now, this is where they hang out when they're on call, but I can tell there's trouble in the air just by the smell. Morning, guys. Morning, morning. 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 Joe, how are you? I'm all right, Gordon. How are you keeping? Yeah, good to see you, man. You well? Now, it's 5.30 in the morning, yes? And it stinks out there. And what's that there? <laughs> <laughs> you guys aren't eating that, are you? No, you are. Huh? <laughs> Am I fuck eating that? That's for sure. The elite emergency response unit, yeah, dealing with all sorts and you're eating shit. You should be fucking ashamed of yourselves. I'm shocked by what these guys are eating, especially considering the physical nature of their job. A few hours before the morning rush hour, I'm taken to a disused station to see what these boys do for London's commuters. Could I just take the lift? Unfortunately, it's not working. Shit. A faulty train pulls in and we get down to work. The electricity on the line is turned off and a short circuit device installed in case the current comes back on. How do we know the lights are off? Uh, the tunnel lights are on. So if the lights turn off, start shitting yourself. Yeah, start moving. Start moving. <laughs> Easier said than done when you're crammed under a train with two 20 stone blokes. I'm gonna take Gordon under with you now, then. Anyone suffering from claustrophobic down here? I mean, you're fucked, aren't you? We're replacing a damaged wheel. So the first thing we need to do is to raise the 25-tonne carriage using hydraulic jacks. Are we going up? Yeah, we are going up. Just trying to keep it square. Yeah. Off you go, boys. Down you go. Get back yeah. under that orange you want to blow. Yeah. No, no, I'm fine. You're fine, yeah? I'm just slightly concerned about the smell of baked beans down there. <laughs> yeah. Who is that, Joe? <laughs> Joe's over the other Fuck side. Now, Joe, can you turn your ass the other way around, please? <laughs> it's right in the direction of my fucking face. <laughs> what I am amazed is how physical this stuff is. I mean, you're carrying some serious heavy gear. And that's not just your stomachs. <laughs> Perfect so job. Pin. Right, pin in, assembled. Good. Gordon, you've seen what we do. Now fuck off out of our station. <laughs> hey, how come we're under there? I know why you weren't under there. You could, oh, five years ago, you could fit, now you've got no chance. Now it's time to show these guys how eating more healthily will help them lose weight and perform more effectively. Right, I'm back in Joe's calf <laughs> to teach you how to make the most amazing breakfast. Yes? Oh, Healthy, straightforward, delicious, and quick. 
first, peel the portobello mushrooms. Nice thing about these mushrooms, they're low in calories. Olive oil, salt and pepper on the baking trays. Put the ricotta into a bowl. They look like Janet Street Porter's teeth that have just fallen out there. <laughs> Grate your parmesan. Chop some oregano. Mix together with the ricotta. Spoon onto the underside of the mushrooms. This is a, a very low-fat cheese. And in terms of flavour, it's extraordinary. Eight to ten minutes in there. 220 degrees, yeah? 220 degrees. Beautiful vine tomatoes. Really simple. Wonderful, yeah. yeah, delicious. Really healthy. Lots of vitamin C. There you go. Rye bread is very high in fibre and packed with vitamins and iron. Better than the white sliced cardboard they're used to. That is a mushroom and a half. I'm going to poach an egg. Little secret. Touch of vinegar in the water. And I just stir the pan so it starts to spin it round. We drop the egg in there and it envelopes itself so the eggs don't stick together and they cook nicely. Proper healthy breakfast. I'll eat it again. Now, it's very quiet, yeah? That's the first minute I've been with you guys. No one said a fucking thing. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Who's for eating a healthy breakfast to start the day properly? Definitely. Dave. Yeah. R really enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah it was fantastic. Yeah. It's lovely grub. Get another four on Ramsay if you can. Say that again, please. I couldn't hear you. Four more on Ramsay. Yes, chef. Quickly. We work well together. I think we do. You know that? I'm Ramsay. not going to marry you. <laughs> Yes, Chef, listening. I'm pleased, I'm pleased. We're cooking, cooking wow. well. Yes, Chef. Yes, Chef. Chef, two I'm minutes, what's next thing before? Two minutes. After the four's in the other now, Chef, what's next, please? Another six. Six, Chef. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Good idea, Chef, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> chef, just out of interest, are those ladies fucking out. cooking anything over there? They are, indeed, yes. They are. They are. Oh, Sauce, me. please, Ramsey. Yes, Chef, coming now, Chef. Fucking hell. Why is he busting my nuts? Come in now. Good. Send them. Yeah. Thank you. You got four in. If you can, put another two on, please, Ramsey. Two more in, Chef. Yeah, and then we're cooking. Two tables of four, Chef, or just no. one table of two? One table of two. Sorry, Chef, I don't four, understand yeah? you. Yes. After your four, one table of two. I got four in the oven, Chef. Plus four. In four. The oven. Or one table of two more. Sorry. You've got four in the oven. Working, Chef. Yes. Yes. You need another two on. Sorry, Chef, I'm confused now. So four plus two twos plus two twos on top Sorry, of that. Are you pissing about him? No, no, you just said that again. Two more. He's having a laugh. No, 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 sorry. So you know four. You know what you're plus doing. Plus four. You Eight. Know what you're doing. Not twelve. Yeah. Just double check. Want to double check, Chef? That's all. Anton. Don't worry. How's your mash? How's your mash? It yeah, it's ready. Earlier. It's ready, yeah? yeah? And in the oven, yeah? How are you doing, Randy? Coming right now, Chef. Sauce ready. Four devil salt on the plate, Chef. Right. All right. Say, Clean the plate. Fucking hell. Done. <laughs> Hey, well done. Ow, That's the first you. time anyone <laughs> has ever yeah, controlled the kitchen. Really? Yeah, and run my past like that. Good. Really well done. Thank you very really much. Well, yes. well done, guys. Well done, well done. Thank you. Right, back to Janet's spit roast. Tonight's the big night for Janet. After four months of rearing her veal calves, David and Elton, she's invited 100 people from all over Nidderdale to try and persuade them that British veal is a fantastic tasting meat they should all be eating regularly. The veal has been spit roasted for eight hours and is nearly ready for eating. Have you had a look at it? Yeah. Looks good. I was really worried about spit roasting them because yeah. I didn't think it was right. But the way that he's done it, yeah. cooking them really, really slowly, I think it'll be all right. People have come from all over the valley. Even the mayor's come for dinner. Hi there. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Get stuck in. Have you had a look at it? Yeah, it's bigger than I thought it was going to be. The weather's great. Let's hope the veal is too. Oh, how's he doing? All right. Looks good. It's looking all right, isn't it? All she needs now is a bit of heavenly help. Bless Dave and Elton, Lord, we pray. Their lives were short, but bright and gay. <laughs> those who have prepared this roast, bless Father, Son and Holy Ghost. <laughs> Up. At 
last, the slow roast with rosemary and olive oil marinade is finished. Janet's farming skills have been put to the test, and now it's time to see if it's all been worth it. It's chewy, in that, but it's still gorgeous. Just how it should be. That's how I like it. It's super. You've got a big portion. <laughs> Tastes lovely. Spit roasting, I thought it was going to be a really bad idea, so I thought it was going to be really dry. But it's not, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm open the seconds. <laughs> I've never had veal in my life. I've seen it on many menus and never picture it. But I will now. Yeah, it's terrific. It's a roaring success. The lean and tasty veal was cooked to perfection and everyone's tucking into the feast. But just when you think it's safe to relax. I just want to have your attention for a minute. Right, shut up for a minute. <laughs> I want to thank you all so much for coming tonight. Everybody cares about these bloody calves. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, I went through the airport at Gatwick. Security man came up to me. I thought, oh, I'm going to have one of those embarrassing body searches. <laughs> Do you know what he said? Howard, David and Elton. <laughs> <laughs> they had a brilliant life. And what we wanted to show by rearing the calves here was that not only is it wonderful meat, but that it's a way of using animals. Just go round and tell all your mates, British feel is great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Janet's veal meal has gone down a storm, and she's made some new friends too. The yeah. only thing we slipped up with tonight... because what? Don't tell me you're moaning about it. <laughs> no, 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 no. We should have brought some raffle prizes and... Oh, no, 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 You fucked up. You won't be coming back to Yorkshire. You would have stuck me on here. <laughs> so thanks. Yeah, you're very welcome. It's a pleasure. Janet seems to be onto a winner. She's got the people of Nidderdale eating British veal. Now it's time for all the rest of us to give it a go. Hi, my darling. Good How are you? <laughs> 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 Jeez, nice and bright. And I'm you look beautiful. Up there. Good. My veal meal was a triumph. It's going to be a hard act for you to follow. Serious. Are they all obsessed with veal now in North Yorkshire? All of them loved it. They're not just scared of you in a way that they just they're just sent to sort of blow smoke Gordon, in your bottle. They're not no. scared. No, but they genuinely enjoyed it. Most of the people there had not eaten veal before yeah. and they adored it. Did you enjoy it? Being a farmer. I really enjoy being yeah. a farmer, but then I take my hat off to real farmers because they yeah. work every yeah. hour God sends yeah. for very little money. And um, it's a tough job. You did a fucking good job. It's maybe a more caring, sharing person. Is it? <laughs> 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 oh, God. It's a miracle. I just want to give you these. What have you got for me? As a little present to say. Oh, thank good. You. And it's so okay. uncharacteristic. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, my darling. Niceness. Uh, I really seriously appreciate it, yes. Can't wait to cook Elton. I look forward to seeing you next week. Lovely. Thank you. My thank you. And such feminine colours. <laughs> just for you, my darling. <laughs> I've never tried Dover Seal before. It was quite a light fish. It was melting your mouth. I thought the nettle trout was very nice, a bit different. Uh, but then the capers and the shrimps were a wee bit salty. Excellent. Nice combination of um, the shrimp and the capers. Capers overwhelmed the flavour a little bit too much, um, but otherwise, lovely meal. Right, results of main course, yes? Jade, first of all, I was impressed with where you ran the pass, yeah? Thank you. Good job. Thank you. I think you may be quite cut out for this chef luck. Oh, you know that. Jose. Right, Jose, let's go. Give me the results, please. Go Thank on. you. Right. The number of guests that are happy to pay for the main course is... 38 out of 50. Oh. 38 out of 50. That's not bad, yes, but it's not that good. 12 not paying. Why? The uh, fish overcooked. Fish overcooked? Yeah. It was cooked on the bone, so it should be nice and moist. Yeah. And the potatoes to dry. Who was it? Uh... Bloody hell. Jade, let's get 50 out of 50 for dessert. Yes, clear down on the sections. Let's go. I know the All Saint girls are winning at the moment, and they are my friends, but I want to beat them. I want to beat them. I want to win it. I'm really excited. I'm so competitive. That was amazing to be called Chef by Mr Gordon Ramsay. That doesn't happen any day. Coming up, 
I find out what supermodel Erin O'Connor likes to nibble on between shoots. I watch the quality of what I put into my mouth. Nice. That's really important. Big difference. And that's my message to the girls. And Jon Snow resorts to desperate measures trying to put me off in the recipe challenge. Thank God you're a talented newsreader. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time for the recipe challenge and time to find out whether Jon Snow can make a few headlines of his own. Are you ready, sir? I am ready, yes. Gordon. Yep. Now, good to see you. What good are you making? You I am making uh, organic salmon fillets on a bed of beans, pine nuts and a few other surprises. Right. That sounds a little bit like a Jamie Oliver recipe. It could be that that's what its origins are, but it's been um, organicised. Organicised. Right. I'm going to do a really nice pan-seared fillet of salmon with a really nice summer broth. How long do you sear it for? Well, do you know what? I'm going to give it a really intense colour and You're... then just allow it to sort of rest on the side. You're just like a politician. You don't actually answer the question. How long are you going to sear it for? How, well, if I told How you that, minutes? well, you're going to copy me, aren't you? No, so, I just want to know. I mean, uh, I, I just want a straight answer. <laughs> I mean, Christ. <laughs> Prime I Minister, think... could you give us a straight answer, I will please? give you a straight answer. How long answer? are you going to sear the salmon? Oh, oh shit. <laughs> I'm going to sear it for two minutes. Right. Thank you very much. Are you That's happy what I needed one? to know. I was going to go for three. If you sear two now. John, your potatoes are burning. Oh, shit. Oh, gosh. So what was your mum's food like when you were growing up? It was yeah. classic English food. Really? Bread and butter pudding. Nice. Roast beef Yorkshire pud. Uh-huh. Toad in the hole. Oh, lovely. Uh, all the sort of things which would make you very fat. <laughs> uh, right, my vegetables now. First, sweat them off with no colour. So just into a pan, low heat, touch of salt, touch of pepper. I've got the spuds done. So they're really only for dressing. I've got some garlic stripped ready for crushing, but I haven't crushed it. So I'm in a bit of a mess, but I'm getting there. This dish is looking very technical of yours, John. It, you know it is, of course, very technical. Huh? Yeah. But I know I shall have forgotten something absolutely critical and fundamental. Well, that would be fantastic if you have. You know I know, that. I know. Now, your father was a clergyman and you're a newsreader. So is your news desk a pulpit? It's a very interesting question. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, no, 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 because I'm not sort of... I'm not into morality or faith or any of that. It is an interesting. You have strong views, don't you? Yeah, interestingly similar uh -huh. sort of occupation. Yeah. Certainly a performance, isn't it? Yeah, well. But you don't get the clothes. He no. had fabulous clothes. You know? Oh, really? And the hat. Eight foot in a mitre. No, extraordinary. Amazing. Eight foot. Just and imagine if you clonked that. And you have your ties. Ties? Outlandish ties, yeah. yes. Ties, and is it yeah, like but they have to be abstract. They mustn't right. say anything. Have you ever counted them? Uh, no, but I, I, I think they're always about 100, because, uh, you know, you, you, be like you, I'm sure that you send your wooden spoons to the auction for charity. <laughs> well, I, I send my ties. What's yes. your favourite tie? What colours do you go for? Bright colours. I was told never to wear bright colours on television. Really? So I wear bright colours on television. <laughs> Is it like thou tie equals small...? I don't know. I don't know if I've got a problem or not. <laughs> I haven't noticed it if I have, but if I have, <laughs> I accept it. <laughs> So, right, vegetables are sweated off. How are you doing? That's all looking a little overdone. Uh, no, it's not looking well done. We're just sweating them off with no colour. A couple of tablespoons of white wine. Reduce that down, then add vegetable stock. So, I've drained my vegetables out there now because the vegetables are cooked. Add in the vegetable stock, you reduce yeah. that down and finish it with a touch of creme fraiche, fresh basil and coriander, and then put my peas and fresh broad beans in then. Not looking what I intended. Now, I'm going to finish the top of my salmon with a really nice walnut pesto. Garlic in. John? This has not gone well. John, you lived in Uganda? Yes, I did, yeah. yeah. Is it true you can sing the Ugandan national anthem? Yes! That's amazing. Thank God you're a talented newsreader. Very nice. <laughs> it has a certain je ne sais quoi. I'm just finishing my sauce with a touch of creme fraiche. It's looking a very much nicer colour than mine. You were slightly nervous uh, a little uh, bit. Yeah, I've got a very slight element of self-doubt just at the moment. A little rescue job has to go Don't on here. Work. Uh, we have to clean that up somehow. Yeah. Ah, finishing my sauce solid. with fresh basil and fresh coriander. Oh, my God. What I've done is I've got the beans ready and they're just on their moment. I see an air of panic over here. OK, salmon's going in the oven. In the OK. Oven? Hell. Right. Now, salmon's got to cook for two minutes, John's going off to change his tie and then the blind taste will come back and give John the bad news. <laughs> right, I'm on a mission to get everyone eating healthy food. This week, I'm turning my attention to a good-looking group of people who've got a bad reputation when it comes to diet. A model's body is her livelihood. So why do so many of them eat so badly? I'm off to glean some words of wisdom from supermodel Erin O'Connor. 
Oh, we should measure you. Sure. Let's have a competition. Actually, you're yeah, over six foot, actually, six foot one. Come on. Having been in the business for 10 years, Erin recently set up the Model Sanctuary, a bolt hole which offers everything from counselling to practical nutritional advice. Six, six two and a half. Six two and a half. Very important, that <laughs> extra bit. I've come to her agency to find out why young models struggle so much with their diet. How about the pressure in terms of their eating? We get a lot of models in and out of the restaurants and they yes. sort of come in, they dip in, they dip out, but they don't really eat. They Do you think they don't really out. embrace the food? I think they're scared. So maybe I'm a good advocate for this because, yes, I do watch what I eat, but I watch the quality of what I put into my mouth. Right. That's really important. And that's my message to the girls. Erin's always been naturally thin, and two years ago she found herself becoming the unwitting poster girl for size zero. Despite improvements in the industry, Erin's well aware young models are still vulnerable. How bad's the problem now in terms of their eating habits? They're young people. They literally, they've left their parents for the yep. first time who've cooked their meals for them from that age. And actually, they go to a foreign land, they don't know where they are, they don't have the ingredients accessible to them, and they can't cook. It's a short, sharp, exciting career that spans, if you're lucky, Three 10 to years. 12 years? Three years. I represent a minority. I've been going for over 10 years now. I mean, I'm practically a granny. How old are you now? I'm 30. Christ, you old bag. I know. It's oh. nice, though, isn't it? You know, <laughs> working, 30, old bag, who cares? <laughs> How old are you, Gordon? 31. Are you? <laughs> so your big worry now is not so much the pressure, but these young girls can't cook. Um, don't have the time to cook. Don't have the time to cook. I'm just trying to sort of encourage yeah. and make fun the benefits of eating well and positively. Do you cook at home? I do. What was the last thing you cooked? Last night I cooked brown rice, salmon and had a bit of salad. It was lovely. And was there garlic in the brown rice? I did just have to do a little burp, actually. <laughs> a little burp? <laughs> <laughs> I was More than hoping little... you didn't notice. <laughs> Erin knows that to keep looking good, you have to eat healthily. But there are still a few models at her agency who don't. I'm going to be meeting Georgina. Georgina is, is a perfect example yeah. of a lot of young models. She is going to have a fast-paced life, and she's got to know and she's got to see the benefits of looking at number one. I'm at a test shoot in London with 18-year-old model Georgina Toms. Now, she got spotted outside Woolworths in Manchester a few years ago, and she's been freshly modelling now for the last two years. She eats a lot of crap. I eat biscuits, lots of biscuits, chocolate a lot, pizza and crap stuff. Probably a student kind of diet, I suppose. Alcohol and <laughs> all that good stuff for you. The average model's career lasts for just three years. Georgina may look great now, but if she carries on like this, her shelf life could be shorter than a packet of her favourite biscuits. So I'm here to show how easy it is to cook and eat a balanced, healthy diet. Great shots. Hi, Georgina. Hi. How are you? I'm all right. Travelling-wise, are you travelling a lot? Yeah. In the past month, I've been to Hamburg, Milan and Madrid. How do you eat when you're on the fly like this? Um, whatever's available. Whatever's actually. available. But that's not what you have for lunch, is it? No, that. that's just snacks. Snacks. <laughs> I can eat half a packet of biscuits a day if I want to. Half a packet? Yeah. No chance. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. I, I like biscuits. It's like my downfall. Are you confident in the kitchen? Um, I can do it, but I might like burn myself accidentally. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Get changed. We'll go to the kitchen okay. and we'll cook something vibrant, healthy, and incredibly easy. Okay. Okay. I'm going to prove to Georgina that healthy food can be every bit as tasty as the beloved biscuits and chocolate. Pancake tuna with a really nice couscous and some roasted vegetables. Chop the veg. Peppers, courgettes, leeks and red onions, OK? Do we need and lots of onions? I don't like onions. You don't like onions. Once they're roasted in olive oil, you'll be surprised. Mix together with olive oil, salt and pepper. <laughs> to serve alongside, I'm using couscous, which is low in fat and high in fibre. Add a dash of olive oil and pour over the hot stock. Cover with cling film and leave it for 15 to 20 minutes. I'm going to make a really quick vinaigrette. Just two thirds extra virgin olive oil, a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, a little touch of white wine vinegar, fresh lemon juice, and zest. Now for the tuna. Crush some coriander seeds with some seasoning. Good. This is like proper manual labour, isn't it? <laughs> labour of love. It'll be worth it. Get some welly in there. Season the tuna and coat with olive oil and the crushed coriander. 
Heat a frying pan, then add the olive oil and sear the tuna. That uh, fucking burnt me. <laughs> Take out and leave to rest for a few minutes. Take out vinaigrette. All nice lemony. Now with the couscous, I keep on shaking the bowl. Got to move it all up. It's all stuck at the bottom. That's why we get a good shake now, so it doesn't become stodgy. Get it off. <laughs> Fresh coriander, lemon zest and juice, and a couple of spoons of the vinaigrette. Vegetables out the oven. A nice spoon of couscous on there. Our vegetables. Yep. And see the grains of the tuna. Yeah. Sliced with that on top. Finally, that is a very quick, easy, healthy yeah. tuna. Okay. Yeah. Right, off we go. Yeah, back to the studio. That smells amazing. Yeah. Excellent. I'm not keen on onions, but no. I'll try one. Try it. It does actually taste nice. <laughs> yeah, good. Has it given you a source of inspiration to go and cook? Well, yeah, I know I can do it now. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of easy once you showed how to do it. I'm going to eat all of this just so you know. <laughs> good. Let's do something different. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. You run the hot plate this time. <gasps> no oh. way, I can't. <laughs> You're absolutely right. No fucking way. Right, <laughs> get on your sections. Let's go. <laughs> right, time for dessert. Gooseberry and elderflower crumble with vanilla ice cream. Gooseberry and elderflower crumble. A great summer version of a winter classic. The gooseberries. Just top and tail them. Pan, sugar, orange zest. Caramel eyes. As the caramel starts to turn, that's what I want there, that really nice golden colour. Gooseberries in. Elderflower cordial. And the elderflower helps to give that syrup a really nice flavour. Orange juice. Slide it off the heat. And look, the whole thing starts to break down to this delicious pulp. Crumble topping. Flour. Sugar. Butter. And all we do now is just rub the butter through. Hazelnuts. Crush your nuts. Mix. Gooseberry and elderflower. Two thirds in. And then with your crumble mix, nice and lightly place it on top. Into the oven, 220, eight to 10 minutes. Look at that. Beautiful. Ice cream. Gooseberry and elderflower crumble with vanilla ice cream. Done. Watch the caramel, please. Don't flick it. It's fucking piping hot caramel and it'll go straight through your skin, yeah? Okay? Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Gordon, can you check that? Does that seem. Yep. You look like you've pasted it into one big ball, Ross. <laughs> like one big lump of lard. Honestly, look at the state of that fucking thing. It's like all clumped together. But that's nice, Jade. Thank you, chef. Yeah? Good. And then straight in the oven. Have you always wanted to be a chef? I think when I was finished with music, yeah. I just immediately found a passion for cooking. But why did you decide to leave music so young? Um, I've, 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 I've been in the music business for 16 years. And I, I just kind of got bored of it. And Brilliant. And did you make any money? With damage, yeah, but a little bit of money. Yeah. Got enough money to buy a moped, and that was about it. Seriously. <laughs> so fuck all, basically. Fuck all, yeah. <laughs> OK, guys. Go, go, go. Trays on. So you got to get plates out and vanilla ice cream in there, yeah? From Jay, I think your pan's fucked. It's both fucked. No, no, careful, yeah. careful, don't put it, yeah. Just... Fuck, you know. So you wet it every time we go in there. Oh, really? Yeah, look. Yeah, helps you get a nice, perfect ball. Service, please. Jade, yeah. what's the advantage of going out with an older woman? No, seriously, give me some tips. I'm standing here with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> look at that face, look, look, look. Behind that lovely blonde hair, blue eyes and a big <laughs> fucking knife. Yeah? They're perfect, beautiful. When the ice cream's on, straight away, just send them. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Good. They're ready to go. Yes, guys, are perfect. Right. Off you go. Jade, well done. Well done. Oh, cheers. Uh, well done, well Thank done, you. well done. Right, Jose, what was the score then? Coming up... What? Will Jon Snow hit the headlines by beating me in the recipe challenge? I don't like it that close, but who was it to? Come on! And the Bunting Brigade find out if they're coming back to cook for final service next week. The number of diners that are happy to pay for the desserts is... Right, welcome back to the F-word. Now, time for the results of the recipe challenge. Now, yours looked absolutely gorgeous. Yes. 
Yeah, mine is Did sudden, you and yours looks like something out of the Channel 4 staff canteen. Huh? Right. Cruel and <laughs> dreadful man. Here, yeah, give it to me. That'll make you look a bit better. Ah, I've got it. Jose, come back with the right result, yes? Good luck. Uh, good luck. Hello. Hi, nice. George. Absolutely delicious. Yeah. True, true. Very distinctive lemon flavour. It's very lemony, isn't it? Mm. Very summery dish, isn't it? Should I dig in? Oh, oh. oh. oh that is lovely. <laughs> There's a lot more flavour to it. Would you say coconut? Is there a bit of coconut left in there? Mm. Mm. I could almost prefer it in slightly less cooked. I like the one with potatoes. The salmon's just cooked nicer. It tastes tastes better. I prefer the one without <gasps> potato. Baby, you got it. It's lighter and it's got better flavours. The one with potatoes. It's just the fact that the salmon is just cooked to perfection. I prefer the one without potatoes. Baby, you got it. All the flavours really complement each other and the sauce keeps the salmon a lot more moist. Can I just say, your fucking mushrooms are still in the oven. I know, I screwed up. I screwed up. You know, what? that man has to make a mistake. I left the mushrooms in the oven. Failure. What role were they going to play? They were only a frill, and it's better without the frills. <laughs> OK, damn. So if you lose, you're going to blame your mushrooms. Right, Jose, what was the score then? 3-2. What? I don't like it that close, but who was it to? Come on! Gordon. Yes! 3-2. Hey, 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 I think two's pretty good, actually. But I'd, if I'd had the mushrooms, I'd have had the three. So, oh. Just imagine. Had those mushrooms gone out, I'd have got the three. Now, John, John, just before we go, a little present for you to remember me by, yes? Gosh. And where on the news tonight? Wow. Right. Now, fuck off out of my kitchen. This will be worn on epic occasions. I had no idea. Has anyone worn fuck on television? <laughs> People have worn fuck all on television, but fuck, I don't think they've ever worn it. I'm wearing this yeah. with very great pride. Uh, <laughs> I think John. this is the best chastisement I've ever received. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Has a certain... Oh, isn't that marvellous? Good, man. Thanks. Good to see you. Fun. Well done. Cheers. I was a bit disappointed by the dish. I was really looking forward to the elderflower in the crumble, but I can't really taste that. Yeah, I think it's great. It's uh, it's nice and sweet. It caught me by surprise. I wasn't expecting hazelnuts. Um, I've never had that in a crumble before. Darling, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Now, how was your dessert? Um, <laughs> a little bit burnt. A little bit burnt. Well, it's certainly um, yeah, caramelised. I can clearly identify that you <laughs> you didn't like that. No. It was a little bit overcooked. Um, Excellent. How was yours? I loved it. I like, Thank God I for that. I like, One happy I like man nuts. at the table. Although, <laughs> elderflower is a week. Well, listen, I'm so sorry you found the elderflower week, but more importantly, I'm happy you enjoyed yours. So sorry about yours being slightly overcooked. <laughs> yeah. Right, Jose, results, please. Let's go. Oh. Yes, let's go, let's go, let's go. The moment of truth. Good. Right. So, the number of diners that are happy to pay for the dessert is... Thirty-six out of fifty. Oh, Damn! Why? They couldn't really taste the elderflower. Are they got colds? What else? And they didn't like the texture. <laughs> it's a fucking crumble. <laughs> it's a crumble, soft and crumbly, oh. no? From me personally, I thought you did a fucking good job. It's not good enough to come back next week, but you should feel proud of yourself. It's been an absolute pleasure having you in the kitchen. Thank well done. You. Yes. Uh... Now, Jade, Damn it. one final piece of advice, yes? Yeah. Please don't open a restaurant opposite me. <laughs> I'm starting to get nervous, yes? <laughs> well done. <laughs>